You see that T? Woo! Welcome back guys, I'm Hunter Constantine, the host of this channel, I'm a professional competition shooter, and today we're gonna go over how to shoot a plate rack. We're at the beautiful Pimo Pistol Club in Tucson, Arizona. We've got mount, uh, you can't see the mountains. There is mountains in the background, we'll pan to that. But today we're gonna go over what fundamentals that plate rack is going to tackle and what's the best way to approach it. So a plate rack is basically a steel bar with six plates on it. Pima has generously spaced plates, so it's going to make the transition's that much harder rather than some plate racks where the plates are right next to each other. Ours are a little bit spread out, so we have to move that gun farther in between each target. I'll be shooting it from concealed today. It's great to get reps on your concealment rig. I've got a tier one MSP holster and my Hunter Constantine concealed carry belt on. So let's talk about it. The first, actually, time out. We're gonna do a cold start. I haven't shot any rounds today. Um, we're gonna see what my initial time is and I'm just gonna go for 100% accuracy here without missing a plate. Then we'll start breaking it down and show you how I build up to shooting the entire plate rack. All right, eyes and ears, let's go. So that was a 334. 141 first shot, 39, 36, 38, 41, 39. It looks like one of these plates is broken too. Let's go check it out real quick. Pima. Guys, we're here to talk about plate racks. This is probably one of the best visual training exercise that you can do for yourself. It's gonna keep you honest and you'll get immediate feedback with the plates. But first and foremost, engage with the channel. If you like to see this content, Leave a comment. Let me know when you go to a Chinese buffet, how many plates you're stacking, because when I go there, they kick me out because I eat all of the crab ragoon. We are rolling with YouTube right now. They are supporting the channel, so I need you guys to show even more support to boost the engagement on these posts. You guys are awesome. I'm trying to give you some educational content from a USPSA Grandmaster, entertaining stuff because we're very based over here and we don't like the government. Engage with us and I'll keep giving you guys some awesome content. So we got our first one out of the way. We have a, a control time of 334. I'm gonna start breaking it down. That draw was a 141. Ideally, if I'm on my gun, around one second, but we're gonna go for about a 120 and see what we can do. We're at 10 yards right now. So I'm gonna do six 10 yard draws on these plates and see what we can get. It was a 118. So 120. So 137, I had to find my sight. Oh, I missed. It was a 113. 119. So 110. Always clear your garment, I didn't do that. Another 161, I got a little tossed up having the garment in place there. So as I said before, the plate rack is a visual tool, meaning that it's a, it's a tool to train your vision while you're going through. Some people think it's like a hoser trainer or trigger press trainer, and I could argue that it does help with your trigger press, but I think more importantly, it's something to train your visual confidence because, excuse me, you have to wait for your dot to be in the correct spot on the plate, uh, pull the trigger and be confident with that to knock it down. So I see a lot of people that will overshoot the plates, undershoot the plates, I even tend to do that when I'm getting a little excited, but being that it's about visual patience, it's important that we're doing everything else right on the gun. So that first shot is very important because that's drawing either from concealment or your gun belt, and you need to make sure that your grip is how you want it to be for the next five shots. I see a lot of people on Instagram and YouTube just ripping their gun out and their grips all f***ed up, and then they get their first hit, but the next five, that's where it starts to fall apart. And so it's very important to get that good grip on your gun, however you build that grip, and make sure you're presenting to the target correctly. Now, with this visual patience, your life will be a lot easier if you remain target focused and you stare at a very small, point on the target. So that's gonna allow that gun to move with you as you're getting to that plate. So when I present the gun, I am looking now at a little speck on this brick wall and my dot is just hovering there. Or if I just present out and look at a full brick, I'm watching a lot more movement in my dot. So 
if your eyes pinpoint on a small specific area, your dot will also pinpoint on that area. So when that gun comes up, you're gonna find that spot and we're gonna have a good trigger press. If you think about your gun and the target in the same line, it, everything should be lined up, like sight, barrel, target, everything's in a line. And you need to make sure that that trigger press isn't influencing it to make that gun turn one way or the other or up and down. Typically on a plate rack, you'll have some more wiggle room depending on the distance. For what we're shooting this video, I got a lot of plate for that dot to be on, but I'm still looking at a very specific spot, bring that gun up, good grip, good trigger press, break the shot. And I'm tracking that hit based on how the recoil feels in my hand. So if that gun feels like it's moving one way or the other, or something feels off, then I probably am gonna need to make a follow-up shot. I'm gonna have dirt behind me instead of knocking that plate down. Now that we have a good grip and we understand the sight alignment and we understand the trigger press, then we just need to do it five more times. So I'm gonna use that recoil as it's coming back to move to the next plate, knock that plate down. I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five until I have all six plates down. And you'll see as my eyes start to warm up, as my hands start to warm up and my wrists start locking more, that as I move down that plate, the times will get faster and faster until we're with our buddy Chad and Sean when I hit my PR play rack at 211. 211. They are some M&P enjoyers. It was great getting to shoot with them after area four. I, I went down to their neck of the woods, shot on their range. I would say their plate rack's a little bit easier than Pima's, so it's not quite apples to apples, but let's get back into the video and talk about plate racks. I'm gonna get so good at flipping the gun here soon. Just don't do this loaded. But now we're just gonna do the whole rack and we're gonna see if we can push that time down. So 271, so we broke sub three on our second one. 131 first shot, 30 split, 28 split, 27 split, 29 split, 26. Um, pretty sporty, so pretty good run. It's clean right off the rip for our second one. So one thing that's really important on this is your transition uh, and keeping a good sight picture. So as you watch, and we'll play this back in slow motion, when my gun is transitioning from targets, I'm using that recoil in between to move to the next plate. So as this, let's unload this real quick. It's about to put it in my mouth, I can't do that. When the gun's coming back in this position and it's rising, I'm coming back down on the next target. So it's boom, 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 boom. That's extremely exaggerated, right? But I'm using that dwell time in between the cycle to move to the next plate. And that's how you're gonna be able to get the fastest time possible. There's some guys out here doing this sub two seconds. Granted, it depends on the rack. I think my PR for one of these is like a 225 or like a 215 from my competition rig, but low twos. And so we're gonna push down and see, but I, I do know that the draw from appendix and clearing a garment is generally just slower than a competition rig that I can just snatch right out of it. So let's keep going. Let's see if we can work these times down. Go, that was a 259, 129 draw, 26 split, 26 split, 26 split, 26 split, 26 split. I couldn't have been more consistent if I tried. That was right on the money. I mean, that was 26s all the way through, every single shot for a 259 total and a 129 first. I think we can still shave a 10th off. We're gonna go for a sub 250 today. So let's run this plate rack again. Oh, so close. That was at a 252, 130 draw, 23 split, 28 split, 23, 24, 24. We almost got it just right there, 250. We are dancing right around it. All right, here we go again, chasing that 250. Oh. Two thirty-two, one nineteen first shot, 22 split, 23 split, 24 split, 22 split. 22 split. Pretty fast, that's a 232. That's some people's build drills times. And we're laying down on six different targets. So that is a draw, five transitions to knock down all six of those plates. You can shoot it left or right. I tend to always shoot faster going left to right because I'm left eye dominant. So my right eye is picking up the targets as, as I'm shooting. So as I'm here, my peripherals is looking at the next plate and my brain is doing all the math needed to figure out where my gun needs to stop for the next plate. And my eyes are locking in on that plate every single time I'm transitioning. So it's like, 
plate shot, plate shot, plate shot, plate shot, plate shot every single time. Guys, this, mm, not, not yet. So again, this tackles a bunch of fundamentals, your draw, your trigger press, your visual patience, and your transitions. And I think that if you're trying to increase your time on stages for competitions, transitions are one of the best things you can work on because people take forever to over confirm their sights. And when you're trying to race times on this, especially at 10 yards, I think it's an eight inch plate, you have to be on your sight. You can't just get a, a predictive sight picture. You need some sort of glimpse of that dot on the plate before you break that shot to get a good hit. Now we'd like to give a short thank you to our sponsors. That sponsor would be me. I'm funding this channel fully through my Constantine carry belts. I didn't just want blind donations or anything like that, so I made a concealed carry belt that is the most comfortable belt on the market. You'll absolutely love it. It will get you carrying concealed more often than not. I found myself not because I was uncomfortable, so I made this belt to mitigate that. No hip pain, no back pain. You can wear it without belt loops. There's thousands of people already wearing them. Tier one white labels them. Everybody loves this belt, so get on the train, and all the proceeds from those belts help fund uh, the ammo for this channel. So if you guys wanna see this content, stop by, grab a belt. Also also rogue methods for training down below. We got a couple codes then visit silencer shop for any of your NFA needs. That is the plate rack. Guys, you saw me walk it down. Walk it down for yourself. Go try it at your local range and uh, we'll catch you next time. I know you're an appendix carrier if your t-shirts start looking like this after you keep wearing them. This is just from rubbing on the gun and other things like that getting pinched.